everybody, it's Bradley back. Thank you for stopping by on the channel Triple Ink. So today I'm going to be talking about one of the most underrated fragrances from the entire house of Yves Saint Laurent. This is L'Homme Libre, a 2011 release. This much gets overshadowed by its two bigger brother flankers, L'Homme and Lanoui. However, this doesn't get as much attention as it actually deserves. So normally I'll go into the presentation segment next. However, I actually have already done an unboxing video of this, gee, about a, about a year ago, I think it's, it's been now. So if you wanna go check that video out so you can see the presentation, I'll leave that link up above. So there aren't a whole lot of notes in this fragrance. I'm gonna run through them very, very quickly for you. Up top we have bergamot, basil, violet leaf, and star anise. In the mid we have nutmeg and pink pepper, a very nice, fresh, spicy mid. And in the base we got the classic woody base of vetiver and patchouli. So let me give myself a fresh spray to sort of remind me of the opening really quickly. There we go. So right away to the more experienced nose, I can easily see how they would kind of toss this aside into that generic category of fragrances. They would smell it right away and be like, generic. <laughs> but it's not, in my opinion, there is a little bit more to that than just that. So yeah, smelling it right away definitely has a lot of similarities to other mainstream designer releases. It will definitely remind you of Bouda Chanel, Dior Sauvage, even Versace Del Boo, this typical sort of shower gel, fresh out of the shower smell but there is a very unique component to that that really sets this apart from those. This is not fruity like those three that I just mentioned, rather this is floral. And wait, when I say floral, don't get scared. This is not your grandma's powdery floral fragrance. This is a masculine floral that uses the note of violet leaf very, very beautifully in here. This fragrance is actually one of the reasons that violet leaf is one of my absolute favorite notes now. I really, really like the way that this smells. It's very ozonic and kind of refreshing at the same time, it has this little bit of an aquatic vibe to it. This always reminds me of walking into a freezer that has like a bunch of frozen crisp violet leaves in there. Very liberating as the name would suggest, kind of airy and very open. This also has basil and bergamot in the opening. It has this little green translucent kind of aura that surrounds it as well. It has the pink pepper in here, the nutmeg for that nice fresh spicy mid and the patchouli and the vetiver make a very, very good, fresh, solid base for this fragrance to sit upon. This fragrance is actually surprisingly smooth and well blended for what it is, and it does have a little bit, a twinge of that original loam DNA in here. It's very much hidden though by that sort of sporty, fresh violet leaf that is in here. Overall, I am very, very pleasantly happy with the smell. I can definitely see it being a mass-pleasing monster scent, as you, if you were to call it that. However, it does set itself apart and is unique because it does bring a floral component to this relatively fruity, generic type of a scent. So for that, I really like what YSL did with that. So guys, the performance, uh, really, it's not much to write home about. It, I only get around four to five hours, like really four hours is really pushing it with the longevity. This doesn't perform even as good as Loam does, which by most people's standards is a pretty poor performer. So know that going in that you're probably not gonna get the best performance. This is one that I would suggest bringing a decant with to reapply. Like most fragrances, it'll project pretty good for like the first 45 minutes to an hour. Then after that, boom, it hits that wall where it just drops off and becomes a skin scent. So would you believe that I actually wanted this fragrance to be one of my signature scents at one point in my fragrance journey? Actually, I wouldn't mind smelling like this fragrance all the time, if you could believe that. So right away, that's gonna tell you something that I think that this is a highly versatile scent. I think it definitely fits the young professional vibe in the springtime. It smells like a guy who knows who he is, who's very comfortable in his own skin, yet at the same time he's striving, he's moving forward, trying to better himself always. And I really like that. It has like this really nice, invigorating, upbeat kind of a go and get him scent. Season-wise, this definitely fits the spring best out of all the seasons in my opinion because of this really nice floral violet leaf that it has. However, it is light enough and kind of fresh and airy enough that I guess you could wear it in the summertime as well. Overall, a warmer weather scent. Now in terms of occasions, definitely to the gym. It's very sporty. I could see it being worn casual. This is actually my go-to casual choice for the springtime. You could wear this to work as well. It's not going to knock anybody over, uh, but you got to bring a decant with you because it probably won't last your entire work shift. And the occasions that I don't see this working in. I wouldn't recommend this for the club because it doesn't perform as good. I wouldn't recommend it for dressing super formal or I wouldn't recommend it for a date because there are just better options for that. Overall this fragrance is very very easy to wear. It could be a really good workhorse in your collection if you're looking for a nice fragrance that smells like you're fresh out of the shower but has a nice unique floral edge to it and it could be used for a wide variety of occasions for the warmer weather of seasons of the month but of course you could wear this any time of the year indoors. I think it would work great for that. Alright, pause this video guys. 
All right, you may need to sit down for what I'm about to tell you because this is some heavy stuff right here. Would you believe me, all right? We are now in the compliment section, okay? Would you believe me that I actually have gotten more compliments, that's right, more compliments with this than with the infamous La Nuit de Lome? Hey, it's true. I'm not gonna lie, this, I don't know what it is about this, maybe it just works with my character, with my personality a little bit better than Lana Wheat does, but I can seriously count on one hand the times I've gotten complimented with Lana Wheat, not too many, and this is double digit easily, I actually just got a compliment with this today already, so this is a very, very good compliment getter, works great off my skin, it's definitely very crowd pleasing, it's gonna work with a lot of people, and I've actually noticed that this gets me compliments usually always within the first like 20 minutes of application because it's coming really strong and people can smell it. Ladies really, really appreciate this that is a big big plus right there they seem to like this after all women usually like fresh fragrances that are like fresh out of the shower right so it definitely nails that category right there and I don't know I'm just really happy with the compliments that I've received with it and it's not quite up there with loam in terms of compliments for me but definitely better than Lana wheat so all right now let's go to the value really quickly this fragrance is available in a 40 mil 60 mil 100 mil and 200 mil bottle sizes you get a lot of different bottle sizes to choose from here Prices can be anywhere from $40 to $50 for the smaller bottles, and if you want to go for the bigger bottles, it could be pushing $100 even for the big 6.7 fluid ounce. So, you know, this is better priced than its competitors, in my opinion, like Dior Sauvage, Blue Chanel, Versace Dillon Blue. Those are all priced higher than this. However, this has been out for six or seven years, and it's held its value pretty good, so that will tell you something about this fragrance. Also, it is a little bit harder to find than some other Loam scents. It's not going to be pushed out by those retailers as much as Loam or Land of Wheat will be. However, if you can find a good deal on it, I think it's definitely worth getting. All right, guys, let's go with some ratings now. What I'm going to rate this underrated gem, I think, from the house of East Saint Laurent. This fragrance, in terms of smell, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Yeah, I'm just really happy with the way that smells. It's got a very nice violet leaf scent to it. Violet leaf has now become one of my new favorite fragrance notes. I love the way this smells. Very smooth, well blended, and classy, refined, sporty. It, it does it all, guys. Now the performance that is really the only weak spot that I can find in this fragrance, it only is going to score a 2 out of 5. It doesn't last that long at all. You're going to need to reapply with this one pretty generously in order to get the results that you're looking for. Now with the versatility factor, it's also going to be pretty, pretty good for this. The versatility is going to score a 4 out of 5. This is definitely a workhorse in your collection, great for the warmer months, indoors, all year round. Fits the gym, a sporty kind of a guy. And like I said, this was once going to be one of my signature scents. I could see myself wearing this for a lot of different scenarios. Okay, it keeps getting better, guys. With the compliment factor, this is going to score a solid 4 out of 5 again. Very solid. This is one of my most complimented fragrances from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. It does get very, very good compliments, much better than Lana Wheat for me. Ladies do like it, so overall, I've gotten many, many good reactions with this. And this is also one of my top most complimented fragrances if we're just talking about spring fragrances. And let's lastly go with the value category. It's going to score an average 3 out of 5. Well, I guess a little bit better than average. You know, this is better priced than its competitors, and it's nice because you do get a nice sort of floral scent that is yet yeah, mass pleasing at the same time. However, it's a little bit harder to find, so that's why I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Okay, guys, so with all of these different criteria added up, I'm going to score for an overall rating Lone Libra an 8 out of a 10. This is a very, very nice fragrance. Performance brings it down big time, though. If this had better performance, like twice as good performance, it would easily be a 9, and I'll be reaching for it nonstop. So the performance brings it down a little bit, but if you can live with that, this is a very good violet leaf scent. If you're looking for a floral fragrance that is masculine at the same time, this would be a great, great one to go check out. And I think that this definitely deserves to be mentioned with those other big, big three fragrances from YSL, like Loam and Lana Wheat. This deserves to be right up there with them, in my opinion. Boom. So guys, that was my little review of YSL Loam Libra. Let me know what you think about this fragrance in the comment section down below if you smelled it, if you tried it out. Tell me all about it down there. As always, be sure to subscribe to my channel for some more fragrance content. And I hope we see you back on my channel sometime soon with another video. Peace.